Right, so I'm gonna try and keep this video short and sweet. Um, so whenever you want to achieve this uh, sort of reflection onto this uh, from the ball onto the text over here, the usual procedure used to be that you had to copy duplicate this ball layer, and at, on the uh, layer below, apply some sort of glow effect onto it. Um, this one looks alright right now and then duplicate the uh, reflected layer this, uh, in this case the type layer duplicate that and the new type layer you're gonna have to put that on top of the uh, ball layer with the glow and then from the uh, glow layer put the track mat to be alpha mat onto the type now you got the type with the reflection of the ball at the current position and now you have to parent the reflection to the um, original ball. Only then can you uh, move the ball around uh, with the reflection. And then you can disable the reflection layer. And there, as you can see, it's, it's now the ball is now reflected onto the type as some sort of light source. And that's, uh, that's how process took uh, quite a while. And if you have a project that looks something like this, that requires a lot of reflection uh, onto another object, then it's safe to say that the Lord has forsaken you. However, uh, apparently the next update of After Effects is gonna come with a blessing. I'm in the beta version currently, and we got the same setup of objects and type. Like, uh, like in the previous scene but now when you look at the track map panel it's actually kind of different uh, we still get the same option to select uh, which mask we want to apply the object on but we also got a pick whip uh, like the one on the parent and link uh, module and let me try that uh, real quick um, kind of, I'm gonna duplicate this uh, layer again and at the layer below it I'm gonna apply a glow effect uh, something like the stock glow would do. I'm gonna pull the glow setting all the way up just so that we can see. Um, all right, this is, this looks good. And now I'm gonna try and yeah, use a new pick whip from the track map panel and pick whip that, drag that onto our reflection type uh, layer. And boom, what is we doing is hiding the uh, original type reflection layer for us and also matting the uh, a glow onto our original type layer. So we basically um, pretty much uh, eliminated the steps of having to duplicate the type layer, that's one, and putting it on top of the glow layer, that's two. And uh, as you can see on the drop down menu, it's not the usual drop down menu that you see in the uh, original matting properties. It's gonna be over here where you adjust all the uh, all the settings of the mask so you can click here to invert the mask or click over here to switch between alpha or a luma mat that's pretty uh that's pretty neat and now all you got to do is uh, parent the glow to the original ball and then you can actually move it around yeah i think that's uh, that's pretty convenient and uh, you can uh, actually duplicate that and it's gonna keep the original settings for you and the good thing is that you don't have to have a bunch of the type layer to clock up all the timeline. Boom, like that. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, can't, I can't wait to see it in the uh, final updates. Uh, one thing I, I probably would get rid of is the when the uh, track mat is equipped onto the object. Um, the object is actually hidden and I think that's pretty confusing. I think just, you know, just leave the object onto the mask as is and no need to hide, no need to actually hide the, uh, the uh, mask object at all. And yeah, it's gonna be pretty straightforward and I can't wait to see it uh, comes out in the final update. What is also gonna help with is doing something like this way quicker and way easier. So, you know, you got two uh, squares over here, one uh, layer on top of each other. Uh, I'm gonna make this uh, green so that it's sort of easier to see in contrast with one another. And now I'm gonna track. I'm gonna track map the second layer onto the first one, and reverse the mask, and do the same thing uh, again. Only this time, uh, pick between the uh, first layer to the second layer, and then also reverse mask. 
and now I'm gonna unhide both of these layers and see what happens, yeah? Boom! We got a perfect uh, inverted squares. And uh, you know, usually in order to achieve this, you're gonna have to duplicate both of the layers, putting them on top of each other as well, and then um, invert, invertly masking the alpha from the first square onto the second square, and then pairing the position from the first square onto the first. From pair. Um, anyway, so yeah. Now uh, you may ask me, you know, why don't we just use set mat instead? The effect is literally right there for us to use in such occasion. And yeah, uh, you can actually use set mat uh, in this particular situation to mask the two squares on top of each other. And it's going to be able to achieve the same thing. You can actually move the mass object around. But here's one situation where a set mat wouldn't be able to accommodate. Like displacement mat uh, or time displacement, uh, the effect uh, is going to be able to use the uh, curtain comb as is or curtain comb as the properties of how it is at the curtain point. So now, for example, uh, uh, the set mat effect is going to be able to be applied uh, for on these two effects um, because there are shape layers. However, if you try to uh, pre-compose this uh, shape, for example, and then do the same thing again, set mat onto this red square, and then set mat it onto the uh, uh, green square, but right below it, as you can see, it's still being matted on top uh, of the green square. However, if I try to move the mass object around, ooh, oh, oh my god. Oh uh, yeah, this is yeah. This is actually why if you try to uh, if you try to adjust the all the settings and all the properties of the layer that is being masked on, the mass itself is not gonna change because the effect is only taking into account the original property of the mask. So yeah, that's a quick uh, quick video, quick update on this feature of uh, of this uh, upcoming After Effects update that I'm really like. I think I saw it first on Twitter and then Nick Grenewald uh, actually covered it in his newest video. So if you're interested, you can actually go and check him out. And yeah, that's all from me. Actually, I just saw Ben Marriott um, answering my question on his latest uh, Q&A YouTube video. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give a reaction to that. Five today. Oh, Hugh Vu asks, what's your dog doing? Aww. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's so confused. He doesn't know why he's here. You know, you gotta have to always ask. It doesn't matter, like, what the industry is like or what salaries everyone get. You need to ask the most important question is, what the dog do you know? Oh, I'm so happy looking at kimchi. And yes, of course he sheds everywhere. Okay, yep, that's the, this is the official ending of the video. Bye bye.